This presentation is about how to stop the pain of peripheral neuropathy. My name is Dr. Greg Olson. I am a doctor of chiropractic. I am board certified in applied kinesiology, practicing functional diagnosis and functional neurology. I have over 300 hours of uh, postgraduate education. And most importantly right now is I belong to a member of nationwide doctors, uh, over 1,000 who are dedicated to helping chronic conditions, including peripheral neuropathy. First in this presentation is to discuss what is peripheral neuropathy. Peripheral neuropathy is a problem with the nerves that carry information to and from the brain and the spinal nerves. When this happens, it can produce a pain, loss of sensation, and inability to control the muscles. Very simply, peripheral means further out from the center of the body. It's distant from the spinal cord and the brain whereas neuro means nerve and pathy means abnormal or diseased. So if you're wondering if you have peripheral neuropathy, uh, the seven key signs or symptoms of peripheral neuropathy include uh, numbness, burning of the feet, cramping in your muscles, uh, sharp electric-like pain, uh, pain when walking, difficulty sleeping from leg discomfort, uh, prickling or tingling feelings in your legs or your hands. So what happens is uh, the symptoms you experience really depends upon which type of nerve is affected. There are three main types of nerves. There are those nerves that are sensory, they carry sensations such as uh, touching and feeling. There are the motor nerves, or the uh, nerves that control muscles. And then there are the autonomic nerves, and these control the organs and glands. When we look at the first set of nerves that can be involved, that, uh, the sensory nerves, this produces uh, sensation changes. So damage to the sensory fibers results in changes in sensation. It can be burning sensations, uh, nerve pain, which can be the electric-like pain, uh, tingling or numbness. Uh, it can also produce the inability to determine uh, a joint position or where your, where your body is positioned at, and this can produce incoordination. Uh, for many neuropathies, uh, these sensation changes often begin on the feet and progress towards the center of the body uh, with involvement of other areas as the condition worsens. Uh, diabetes is one of these common causes of sensory neuropathy uh, that uh, can happen in the feet and the hands. Uh, another one, uh, a couple different names are uh, sciatica um, and also carpal tunnel syndrome. Those are some common ones that you may recognize the names of. When the motor nerves are involved, this can produce movement difficulties. So damage to the motor fibers interferes with muscle control, and this can cause weakness, loss of muscle bulk, loss of dexterity. Sometimes cramps are a sign of this is going on, uh, that there's motor nerve involvement. Uh, there are other muscle-related symptoms that can be involved. These include uh, difficulty breathing or swallowing, difficulty or inability to move a body part. Uh, it can be paralysis or partial paralysis. Um, it can be falling from legs buckling or tripling over your toes, not knowing uh, where your legs are from that uh, nerve damage with the muscles. A loss of dexterity. Uh, this can include such as being unable to button the shirt or tie your shoes. Uh, lack of control of your muscles. Loss of muscle tissue or muscle atrophy. Uh, muscle twitching or cramping. Now, the third category of nerves that can be involved are the autonomic nerves. These control the involuntary or semi-voluntary functions such as control of internal organs and blood pressure. Damage to autonomic nerves can cause things such as uh, abdominal bloating, blurred vision, constipation, decreased ability to sweat, and diarrhea, uh, difficulty beginning to urinate. It can also cause dizziness that occurs when standing up or fainting associated with a fall in blood pressure. It can cause you to feel full after eating a small amount of food. Uh, it can cause a feeling of incomplete bladder emptying, Heat intolerance with exertion, uh, male impotence. It can also relate to nausea or vomiting after meals. It can also produce unintentional weight loss, more than 5% of your body weight. Uh, it can also produce urinary incontinence. These are all signs that these nerves that are controlling your body's functions are not working. Now, you may be wondering what causes neuropathy. There can be a variety of causes associated with this. Um, the first one we're talking about here can be a physical cause. Um, this one can be such as uh, previous traumas to your, to your body. Uh, example is I hurt my back years or decades ago. 
This can lead to, lar to uh, scar tissue, arthritis. Um, there can be spinal stenosis or where that, the openings close down on the spinal nerves or the spinal cord. It can be a bulging disc. Uh, additionally, we can look at uh, chemical causes such as statin drugs. Uh, those are commonly used to uh, control cholesterol. Diabetes, uh, type 1 or type 2, it can be also associated with a poor diet. And there are times where we look at genetics, uh, can be associated with it. Um, in general, though, what it looks at is about 80% lifestyle con contribution and uh, the 20% genes uh, contribution when we look at the genetic component. So you can see as time goes on, older people have a definite decreased potential to make ATP to begin with, and then taking these statin medications, which suppresses their ATP production to a point which the neurons cannot maintain their electrochemical gradient, or basically speaking, their health. The uh, frequency of firing, which is uh, how these nerves work or how they fire, will decrease, and then this is perceived by the brain as numbness and tingling, uh, just depending upon the exact fiber that is affected. We also talked about diabetes and how that can be a source of neuropathy. Uh, when we look at diabetes, we look at insulin. And insulin is a hormone produced by the pancreas to control blood sugar. In diabetes, uh, that can be caused by too, too little insulin, insulin resistance, or it can be caused by both. But ultimately, uh, this uh, problem with insulin affecting the ability for cells to work properly uh, can lead to diabetic neuropathy in the lower extremity of the feet or the upper extremity in the hands. One thing that we've discovered in uh, working with this group of over a thousand doctors uh, nationwide in looking at resolving chronic conditions, including peripheral neuropathy, is that all these chronic health conditions seem to have some common elements to them, whether it be fibromyalgia, peripheral neuropathy, or vertigo, or sciatica, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, chronic pain, uh, irritable bowel syndrome, insomnia, or digestive disorders, the common things that we see are uh, oxygen deficits, uh, neurological misfiring, metabolic imbalances, including the blood sugar, uh, cortisol, hormones, uh, anemia, uh, and autoimmune attacks on your body, and brain imbalances. One of the key components of these chronic conditions, including peripheral neuropathy, is getting a solid uh, lab test or a good series of lab tests to see how your body's working. One thing that happens with this is many times um, we'll get lab tests and they'll look like they're all normal or you have been told that they're all normal. So what we see is lab ranges um, have a very broad range. Some people say they're inaccurate uh, simply because that bell curve is used and it creates a very broad range. We look at what's called functional lab values, and this is a tighter, more optimal range to see, uh, well, basically they're more sensitive to reveal problems that are developing or in the early stages. Now, these are some examples of how uh, lab ranges can vary. Uh, for example, blood sugar, uh, laboratory range may be anywhere from 65 to 110 before there's a uh, indication of a problem. In our functional components, we look at a range from 85 to 100. Uh, if it's below 85, uh, it can be an indication towards hypoglycemia. Another example is uh, TSH, or thyroid stimulating hormone. Uh, and what happens in this situation is the laboratory range, you can see is from 0.3 to 5.7. It's a huge range um, and really prevents, prevents uh, the identification of some problems that are going on. Uh, in a functional range in that, in that uh, measurement, we look at 1.8 to 3. And so in this situation, if um, the test result was 4.2, it would tell us that there is a hypothyroid situation that's going on. And uh, it's very key to be able to uh, address that problem to address your problems. And next up is looking at cholesterol. Uh, in the cholesterol range, um, laboratory ranges look at, usually look at under 200 as optimal. In the functional category, we look at 150 to 200. So uh, if you had a reading of 148, you might be told that that's a, that's a great reading. But from a functional standpoint, um, that would tell us to look at uh, some connections that may be happening, including what may be a hormone imbalance. So, 
So in order to effectively address uh, some serious and chronic conditions, including the peripheral neuropathy, a uh, comprehensive neurologic and metabolic workup is very appropriate. Uh, you can see from the neurological test, uh, we would do uh, right and left blood pressure, uh, tissue oxygen, uh, checking heart rate and rhythm, uh, including heart rate variability, uh, a saliva pH, reflexes, uh, eye tests, uh, cranial nerve testing, and cerebellum testing. From the metabolic testing, uh, including blood sugar levels, your adrenal function and cortisol levels, uh, thyroid hormones, and also looking at uh, your immune system through the presence of different antibodies, including the cerebellum, the thyroid, um, also looking at the hormone panel, a female hormone panel if you're a woman, a male hormone panel if you're a man, uh, and looking at uh, food sensitivities. And last on that category, uh, which many times is the most critical, is looking at the immune panels. So as part of a comprehensive and neurological and physical examination, um, that in ensures an accurate diagnosis to make sure that your treatment is most directed at what's going to get you better. So when we look at one component of a treatment program, this, uh, on a neurological basis, when we look at treating the cerebellum and brain dysfunction, they basically require two things in order to function properly, uh, fuel and activation. Fuel requires glucose or blood sugar and then oxygen. For activation, this, re this is looking at uh, where the signals are deficient that are uh, being fed up to the brain. And this could, uh, to stimulate this, can include a unilateral or one-sided manipulation or movement of the spine and body, uh, and also what we call brain-based rehabilitation. An additional very innovative and cutting-edge approach that we use is using what's called laser therapy. Uh, laser therapy. Um, we use the MR4, the, uh, MR4 system in our office. Uh, it's great for patients that have chronic nerve damage. When we talk about physical causes of peripheral neuropathy, these can include uh, herniated discs, bulging or protruding discs, uh, degenerative disc disease or posterior facet syndrome. Um, you may experience sciatica. Uh, these are conditions in which we use a physical treatment called non-surgical spinal decompression. Uh, what we use is called the Triton DTS uh, and have very good success with regard to uh, working on this component of peripheral neuropathy. This is one example of a functional uh, adrenal test. It's called an adrenal stress index. And this is where we look at one part of the metabolic component. This is where your cortisol levels can be measured from throughout the day to identify uh, what stressors may be occurring. Could it be glycemic dysregulation, tissue inflammation or pain, uh, emotional stressors or sympathetic overflow that's relating to this cortisol? So ultimately, when we look at peripheral neuropathy and we look at the connections between metabolic and neurologic, we look at the hemisphere brain in the brain misfiring and with the metabolic complications. These are the different pieces of the puzzle that we have to look at, the cerebellum, the cortisol levels, oxygen levels, blood sugar, hormone balance, uh, and midbrain functioning. So the key to successful treatment is correcting the brain misfiring and the metabolic dysfunctions. This is perhaps one of the most important elements of a successful treatment program, and this is retesting. Retesting lets us know that we're on the right track and achieving the right results. And this is uh, separate from symptomatic improvement, uh, which typically follows this, but um, the actual objective findings found with, with retesting is very key. Our success comes by treating the whole person. We bring all the pieces together at the same time. So you may be asking, what now? This information is great, but how do, I, how do I use this? How do I find out if it can help me? Well, if you or someone you know has peripheral neuropathy or other chronic health condition, and you want to know if this brain-based therapy is right for you, very simply schedule a BBT screening, consists of 12 screening tests. You can reach us at 949-859-5192. If you would like additional information, please visit my website at AskDrOlson.com. Again, my name is Dr. Greg Olson. It was a pleasure to speak with you today. Um, 